this is Jenny Marimo, and welcome to part two of Behind Book Tech. Uh, so basically, I'm using photo booth of my MacBook again, and the reason for that, it turns out my old camera heats up quite quickly, and I think it kind of broke down. So yeah, back to photo booth. Anyway, so yes, part two of Behind Book Tech. So this book tag, as I mentioned before, is created by Mandy Lin. If you haven't checked on my part one, which is about the first question, what my book, okay, what my book under her Kirsten site is about, and what genre is it, go check that out. As for part two, I'm going to answer the second question, was my story inspired by anything in real life? So uh, if I do talk about this question, it could last one hour or more than one hour because there's so much, you know, a lot of stuff that inspired me. But I want to mainly talk about, you know, one thing and it's related to this here. Oops. So yeah, this is in fact a crystal, but not just crystal, but I would say things that I treasure are, yeah, I treasure a lot. Um, like this, my ring as well. This is also one of the items that inspired me. The reason for that, in my part one, I've mentioned a group of people called the Blessers, which are also the main focus of my entire series. And for them, not only that they are, you know, in between witches and witch hunters, they also have a companion, which are normally fairies. I would also say sometimes demons as well, but mostly fairies and spirits, okay? But how do they become friends? Like, how do these, um, you know, blessers get to know these fairies and, you know, convince them to lend their powers to them? Well, it's quite complicated, but the you know, the, the similar form is that they are in fact also, you know, blessings are also the foster parents of these fairies. So basically, like for example, I have this crystal here and for certain objects, for certain reasons that I can't tell because I will spoil a lot, but for some reasons in these objects that you treasure, there is a soul in it. So I believe all the items have souls in it, but they will not come to life or have a shape or grow into anything um, unless you know, you nurture it. So how you nurture it is basically you treasure it, shower it with a lot of positive emotions and energy into it, or for demons will be negative energy into it, and slowly it will grow into something. And when it has a shape and a mind, or you can say it looks like a living being, it's normally, you know, that's when a, a fairy or a demon or a spirit is born. And how it ha comes into shape is mainly affected by imaginations as well. For example, like I always have a, a lot of imaginary friends, right? If you check out my Instagram, you will always see that I've talked about my imaginary friends when I was little or even now what I have, you know, uh, when I was like all the imaginary friends I have. So basically the concept is from that. So for example, for this ring, um, I've always, you know, if I have to imagine a living being growing out of this, what would it look like? Um, until recently, I found the perfect, I wouldn't say the perfect, but something that describes the image I have for the being that will grow out of this ring, which is this. So you can imagine, like, I treasure this ring a lot, and someday, uh, based on my story concept, it will grow into this, a little fox here, or in Japanese, kitsune. So this is my, I would say, if I'm a blesser, this would be my familiar. And, and somehow it will lend its power to me, that, you know, bless its powers to me. And therefore I use this powers to bless someone and therefore becomes a blesser. Of course, becoming blessed is not that easy. There are a lot of more complicated procedures in that. But yeah, for now, the most general concept is like this. And then, so basically you have these fairies that you nurture them. So you're their parents, you're their friends. And... Yeah, and, and the reason for that, if you look at some of the photos I have when I was little, I was never alone. I have a lot of imaginary friends and each item, no matter it is a figure or item, I can always see a friend in it. And uh, of course, when you're little, you will even talk to it. And you can see I, wherever I go, I always have to bring an item that I treasure very much with me because it makes me feel secure. It makes me feel less lonely. And even if I'm alone, I will know there will always be friends around me. I know when I talk about it, it feels like I'm insane, but sometimes I believe people have to live between imaginary world and the real world as long as you find the balance in it. Like you, if you know what is imaginary and what is real, that's it, it that's cool like you can allow the existence of imaginary friends as long as you know they are imaginary you won't mix it up with the real world for me writing or when i 
create stories. It's like traveling between the real world to the imaginary world. I'm, I'm traveling in between, but they never mix together. And therefore, the stuff I do in each of this world will never, never affect each other. Like, I would not let reality to destroy my imaginary world. Like, I would not, never, never stop imagining stuff. But at the same time, I would not confuse myself with imaginary stuff like I have imaginary friends I know when I don't have friends I will figure out how to deal with my real life friends I wouldn't say because I have imaginary friends then I, I wouldn't need anyone you know and I wouldn't say blessers is the, uh, the first idea I have a long long time ago when I look back at the stories it's always about me and this little being this imaginary friend being together having adventures um, doing magic together and this is somehow my childhood this story that the things that inspire me is mostly the childhood I have. I remember, you know, telling my friends I have this Carol Chan, you know, I like Captain Sakura, right? I have this Carol Chan figure, and I told my friend, like, so telling her, like, at night, this being, like, for example, this character will come alive and it will talk to me at night, only at night, okay? While I was in school, they will not affect me, but only at night they will talk to me. They are my friends and stuff. Um, and I would say, I, I've recently also this little journal here to document all the imaginary friends I have when I was little and up till now of course I haven't completed but there are some you know some of the pictures you can see yeah this is my ring that's talking about the currency so each of the objects I can always find join it so this is Carol Chan the ugly version of it and also a pin that I've bought in UK like I can imagine it's not just imaginary friends sometimes it's it's a weapon or a magical wand for example this is what I think it's, uh, I would imagine it as a magical wand or magical object that will help me to perform magic like this. And also, I've also written um, that I've mentioned about this crystal ball that I uh, wrote a writing on it, how it is, you know, it is the first, you know, magical item in my imaginary world, how I use it to, you know, perform magic when I was in primary school. I wrote a passage in it, so go check that out, you know, that video out, I talked about that as well. Um, so these are the photos that I've just shown you when I was little, like how it is my you know, transformation device, okay? Because I love magical curls. And like all of the items, accessories, you know, the things I treasure the most, how, what are the stories behind it? What are the magical adventures I have with it? What are the beings it's behind or inside living in these items I own? So this is something I enjoy, like always looking at stuff and always reminding myself not to throw away single one of them because they are full of memories. They are the storage of the memories I have up till now, like even from my childhood memories. And therefore, like, when I write, I always wear this ring because it is my current imaginary friend, as I said. And when I don't run out of ideas, I will look at this ring and imagine, it's like, what would I do in this situation? If I have a friend here, like I have my imaginary friend, I call my friend here, Dawn. So what would I do if Dawn is here? Like, what would the adventures be like? And what kind of magic will I be using? Um, what will I do in that imaginative world and stuff? It's a reminder to me. It, like, yes. That's one of the greatest inspiration I have for my stories. Uh, so, yeah, I think probably that's it. I've spoken for such a long time, repeating the same stuff. But I, I really, really love this. And, yeah, it inspired me a lot. So, yeah, I guess wait for part three.